Jesus was the king of semen retention. What's crazy to me is he doesn't come from fame. He doesn't come from money. But 2,000 years later, people are still willing to die for believing in him. He's changing lives still to this day. He came from a little town called Nazareth, which had maybe a couple hundred people in it. And yet, he's the most well-known person on the planet. Like, what? what there's got to be something there, man. When people are willing to die for him... People don't just get famous because they get famous. Like, people aren't following a religion you made. People aren't following you. Not a lot of people know who you are. And it's the same thing with Jesus, bro. People thought his mom was a whore. People thought his mom was an adulteress. Because she wasn't even married to Joseph, yet she's pregnant. So understand that there's some kind of power this Jesus guy has. Now, whether you believe he's the son of God or not, God in the flesh or not, that's up to you. But ask yourself, ask the highest power to make himself known to you because so many men are struggling with pornography addiction and masturbation addiction. And there's got to be some power outside of yourself to overcome this because you've been trying so long and you haven't been able to sustain a long streak. You haven't been able to go months without doing it. And I went over seven months before I relapsed. And as they say, pride comes before the fall. I was so prideful. I was so religious. I was so judgmental. I had a lot of pain and trauma unhealed. And I thought I was above people. And then I fell. But when I got delivered, bro, and I'm telling you, the longest I could go without doing this was 11 days before the withdrawals got too intense and I had to relapse. Before I got delivered and went seven months clean, I would pray to God every day, bro. I would cry. I was just so broken and so helpless. And I knew that. And I stayed consistent. And one day God just delivered me, bro. And I went over seven months. And for six and a half months, I had literally no withdrawals and little temptation. But then my ego kicked in. But then my mind kicked in. My, the mind is your own worst enemy, bro. And then I relapsed. I fought for two weeks. Two and a half weeks. Just past seven months. Boom, I fell again, and I've been struggling to get back up. I mean, this is no joke. If you can do this, I mean, good luck. Like, really, good luck doing this without God. If you can do it, if you're like the 1% that can do it without God, okay, but it's still probably only a matter of time before you fall. Or you're having sex with a woman. Or you have a wife, and you can just satisfy the urges. But if you're a single man, and you want to be celibate, good luck without God. Man, the creation is evident of the creator. I mean, us humans know about 5,000 planets. None of them have life. If the sun was even an inch closer or an inch farther away, life could not exist on this planet. I mean, the fact that, like, I'm just alive. <laughs> There's like seven, 8 billion people on the planet. Like, it's crazy, man. It's literally like I'm living in a video game. I mean, it's so crazy. And people think they know it all. So many people are ignorant and they have all these opinions and decisions made in their mind based on ignorance and lack of knowledge. But yet they think they know it all. And this is a hard truth, man, because I was that guy. Oh, <clears throat> I'm not a Christian. There's too many denominations, too much division in the church. Let me look into Islam. Let me look into New Age, medium, psychics, crystals, tarot cards. I did it. <laughs> I did it. And then guess what? I had a dream happen to me that led me back to the Bible. Because I was still broken. I was still lost. I was still searching. Man, what is the point of life if you don't have a belief in God? Because it's just like, man, the, the, the clock is ticking. Like, soon, <laughs> you know, each second that passes is a second closer to getting old and dying. I don't understand it. So Jesus was the king of semen retention. And he is the Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. <laughs> like, bro, by, by him, all things were created, visible and, inv and invisible. He is God, bro. And he can help you and he loves you, man. This isn't about like, oh, you got to know. It's like he loves you so much, man. God literally, <laughs> God doesn't need us. But yet, God continues to bless us and give us so many things, even though we're broken and we chose to rebel against Him. 
God still said, you know what? I love you guys. You know what? I'm going to call him as a human being, die, so I can fulfill my spiritual law that I put in place so you all can get to heaven, so I can see you again. So that barrier between us, that sin barrier, can get broken. Because think about it, man. In the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals to pay the fine for the sin they committed. Because blood is life and sin is death. So that's what they would do. But that wasn't sufficient, man. A lot of animals were being killed and God promised the Messiah to come. And eventually the Messiah did come, lived a perfect life, died, was buried, rose on the third day. And now, boom, by putting your faith in him, your sins are all forgiven. Like, man, God doesn't hate you. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more. If you knock on 20 doors and spread the gospel, God doesn't love you anymore. Now, God doesn't like the sin we commit, but if you have a son and your son is addicted to drugs, do you hate him? No, you hate the drugs. You don't hate him. But understand, if out of pride you choose, I don't need you, God. I'm going to do this game of life on my own without you. Then you chose not God. So if you die today or when you die, guess what? Because you chose that you don't need God, you won't go to heaven. You'll go, oh God, I didn't know this was real, but see what I'm saying? So rely on God to help you with this no fap. And it's probably not going to happen in one day. You're probably not going to pray to God in the first day he's going to deliver you. Because for me, it took a couple months. Like, God will test you. God will see if you're consistent, if you really want it. You know, like, think of it this way. God doesn't answer our prayers because that's the only time we'll talk to him. We'll only talk to, talk to him when we need something, when things are not going well. So God will be like, you know what? I'm going to shower you with my love, shower you with my peace. I'm going to draw you in through this pain and trauma and get you to talk to me more and get to know me more. And then I hope that you'll stay. Then I hope you'll continue chasing me. But if you just pray to God one time, and he's like, all right, boom, healed you. Then you just go back out and live life and, and not even pray to God anymore. Imagine being on this planet 33 years and never busting the nut, never falling to lust, never committing a sin. Like, I mean, you got people that want to kill you, bro. You got people mocking you. You got people jealous of you. I mean, and you just never even sin. You, you, you don't. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're literally God, bro, in the flesh. You made everybody. And they're trying to kill you. And they hate you. <laughs> like, what? What's up with that, man? And they don't even believe you're, you're God in the flesh. You're raising people from the dead, healing the sick. Oh, he's, he's a devil. He's a demon. He's a devil casting devils out of people. Like, what? It's crazy. I don't get it, man. And then you have the crucifixion. They chose to crucify a perfect man instead of crucifying, um, what's that guy's name? Ah, uh, Barnabas, I think. He was like a murderer, man. Killing people. He was a, he was a re wreaking mayhem on the city. But it's like, nah, let, let Barnabas go. Crucify Jesus instead. Like, I, man, people are whack. And then they're spitting on him, just shove a crown of thorns in his head. I mean, good gosh. So none of your difficulties are too hard for God. You're not too broken for God. Like, God wants to help you, man. God wants to help you so much that he died inside his creation to, to help you. To have a relationship with you. See, that's what separates Christianity from everything else. There's facts. There's prophecy that's happened, is happening, will happen. I mean, the Bible's like pr proven time, man. It stood the test of time. The diet laws in, in the Bible, the cleaning laws in the Bible, um, prophecy. It, it's crazy. But Islam ain't like that. Hinduism ain't like that. Buddhism ain't like that. Oh, Buddhism, you're your own God.